Good afternoon, everybody. Salam alaikum. My name is Salman. I think many of you have uh, heard uh, about me before. Um, I'm the uh, attache, the cultural attache here at the embassy. And part of my portfolio is the English language programs. Um, so today we have a very special program lined up for you. Uh, the topic of this program is to learn English. Uh, Nispeak You is our new uh, program on YouTube where we talk about learning a language, specifically learning English and our tips or advice that we can give as uh, hosts that have had to learn English before. I think many of you know that I'm not originally from the United States and I've had to learn English. So I've, uh, I've gone through the, the process. Um, I would like to first introduce our co-host, Leticia. Leticia, would you like to say a few words? Hi everyone, welcome to Nispeak You. I'm Leticia and I will be hosting it with Selman every week. We'll be giving you guys a lot of fun ways that we can learn English together. And we will also be giving you many tips and you can join with us right from home. Perfect, Leticia, thank you so much. Um, so as I said, uh, we've both had to uh, learn English and we're going to share our experience uh, today. Um, I wanted to tell you about how I had to learn Arabic. Um, Arabic is a very difficult language to learn because the spoken language or Amiya, Darja, is very different from the written language, Fusha. So there are no written textbooks that teach you Amiya or Derja. Um, that meant that I had to listen to music, Arabic songs to learn uh, the spoken language. And I wa was listening to a lot of Rai songs from the 80s and 90s. Um, so that's how I learned a lot of phrases that I could use in Algeria, like Talmon Nebrik, Daba Dunya Zian, and That is true, you guys. In music is such a good way and fun to learn English. And as you can see, Salman kind of learned Arabic with that, except that he's speaking more of a Moroccan dialect. That's not really how we speak, Salman. What do you mean? I mean, all these, isn't Rai Algerian? All these artists that have songs, they were speaking Darja. So how come I can't use that here? Yes, they were speaking Darja, but most of Rai artists actually come from Oran. That's why you will notice a slightly bit differences between the accent they speak and the accent we do speak here in Algiers. And you were speaking more of completely different. You were speaking more of a Moroccan dialect. Okay, so basically what you're saying is I should have gone to Oran and worked at the US consulate there to make exactly. any sense. So all that that, that I learned does not work in Algiers, but it's the same country. And it Oran is like work. four hours, but Oran is four hours away. So, I mean, for example, if you go to Washington DC and you want to go to New York, which is a four hour train ride, you can basically understand everything that they're saying. Can You can't do that here in Algeria? You actually can, but there will be a bit of differences in words. Like if you speak that, uh, which I don't know who taught you that, if you do speak that, they will take you as someone from Oran. And Debat Zian, I'm pretty sure, is completely Moroccan. So that's why you'll notice differences according to the region. It's not completely like English. Okay, well, it's good to know that people think uh, I'm not from here, but they think I'm from Oran and not the US, right? Because my derja is so good otherwise. Anyway, um, it's interesting because when you look at music in English, the great thing about learning English uh, through songs is that if you choose a British song or an American song or an Australian song, it will all make sense in the same language. Um, 
a, uh, an American will be able to understand a British uh, song. So. Um, I don't agree on that. I honestly think English is not, I mean, yeah, you can understand British English as an American, an American can understand British English, but what about accents like Scottish? Let me read you lyrics off of a song I found online and tell me if you can understand this. Here it is. It goes like, we too, hey, run about the breeze and put the goings fine, but we've wandered money a weary fit Sin days of old blank sign. Can you explain that to me? Okay, that's definitely not English. Um, was I English. really, I have no idea what you said, and it sounded like someone speaking English backwards. Um, do any of the YouTube uh, viewers can comment on what they think this song was trying to say? Um, I wanted to also point out thank you to Mohamed JDA on YouTube for saying that they can still understand my bad Moroccan style, Oran style derja. Um, anyway, I think Leticia, you have some good points there. Um, so thanks for, I had no idea we had songs in like that that are considered English. Also, by the way, guys, before the live, Simon was telling me how English is way more poetic than Arabic. Do you agree? Like, tell us in the comments if you think Arabic is more poetic or English. Yeah, um, I think I, I think Arabic is super poetic and so difficult. But uh, English songs are much more easier to understand. I think I know some Arabic speakers who have heard songs that don't know anything that they mean, whether they're in Derja or. Egyptian dialect or Fusha. Um, before I start sounding like a broken record, uh, so a note here, this is a proverb that we use in English to, to mean uh, that this person is starting to repeat themselves for no benefit. This person sounds like a broken record. A record is the like a vinyl record that you use to listen to music. So listening to a broken vinyl record is painful to listen to. Anyway, before I start sounding like a broken record, uh, we can continue with our song, with our uh, show, actually. Uh, now we did have a, a guest planned for the show, um, but unfortunately, I think she has a music practice right now and got caught up in that. So you'll just have to deal with me and Leticia for the show. We have a lot of good um, advice to help you learn English through music, and we'll show you some resources on how to do that. Um, so, Leticia, uh, how did you did you ever use music when you were learning English in in an Algerian school? Um, I definitely did use music. It was not exactly in school. It was like outside of school. I mean, in school, you still get these textbook songs and all. But outside of school, I when I was a kid, I would listen to Disney songs nonstop. And that really taught me the accent. But then when I started growing up, I started listening to all types of music, rap, pop, whatever, you name it. But my favorites were also classics to learn because that, well, that way you can get English, a richer English and more accurate, if you like. Yeah, I think that's uh, a good point. Um, so to just give you guys an idea of why we believe, uh, and scientists too believe actually that music is good to learn, is that there's something called the Mozart effect. Now the Mozart effect is what scientists call the concept that listening to classical music boosts the performance of learning. So when you listen to classical music, um, it will help you study, it will help you focus and concentrate. I don't know if any one of you uh, does this uh, to work or to study for your exams, but I, I really think that music, certain types of music helps you learn better. Um, so my problem is that I can't listen to music that has words in it if I'm reading because I can't, I can't focus on two things at the same time. So either I'm gonna focus on the words that are in the song 
or I'm going to focus on the words in the book. Uh, so that's my issue. Um, but one of the great things about learning uh, language through music is that music is the best mirror for everyday language. When you hear music, that music is the best example for the type of language used every day um, in that specific country. Um, a lot of the songs have these deep meanings, but most of the lyrics are the same meaning when you speak them. Uh, and they're very colloquial. So you'll notice that just like in Arabic, the music that uh, Sheikh Khaled sings is not the same poetry that's written in Fusha. The same way is true in English. So you're not going to hear Shakespeare when you listen to music. I Sorry. What? I said you won't hear Shakespeare in a Nicki Minaj song. Exactly. And I think that would be really funny if that was true. Um, I would love if any one of the YouTube viewers can find uh, a classic uh, English, classical English in, in, a, in, a music, in the music of today. I think that's a challenge um, and it would be really funny. So for people like me, I really did not like Shakespeare or any of the classic art, um, authors in English class. I just could not, I couldn't read Shakespeare seriously. I couldn't understand it well. I didn't feel like I could, under, I could relate to it. So music is the way to go. Um, the other cool thing about learning uh, music through, sorry, learning English through music is that the music itself has a rhythm and rhythm is extremely important when you're trying to learn a language. So when your mind gets used to the song and the rhythm in the song, the same types of pronunciations over and over again, you'll understand that, oh, this verse in this song is pronounced this way. And over time, if you keep hearing that song, you'll start to remember it without it even playing uh, out loud. And you start understanding how letters in English can be pronounced in whichever ways. Uh, we do um, have a question here from Lucio Squirrel that wants to know how they can improve English and how can we help them? I mean, I definitely second Salman that songs are definitely one of the most fun ways to learn English. And of course you will also learn slang and learn words that you cannot really get from textbooks. And also a great point that Salman didn't mention is accents. You cannot really learn how to speak a certain accent through books. And that's why I think listening to songs from certain places improves that, right Salman? Yeah, exactly. I think that's a great point. Um, so to, 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 make most, to make the most of this type of technique to learn English, you have to go to the right places to learn. Um, and I'll show you some of these places that you can go to to learn English in a bit. Um, the essential part of it, though, is you have to go to the right places. Um, you have to find the music that you love. Uh, if you don't like opera and you want to learn Italian, you don't have to struggle and listen to opera to learn Italian. You can go and learn Italian or whatever language you want, um, finding the music that you like. What I love about Arabic is Arabic, because it's spoken by 300 million people in the world, has so much diversity. If I want to listen to Rai, it's in Arabic. If I want to listen to pop music, there's pop music in Arabic. If I want to listen to underground, rock, uh, hip hop, all of these exist in Arabic uh, as they do in English. So you don't have to limit yourself to music that you don't like to listen to. Um, and sometimes, uh, you know, it'll be challenging uh, because uh, these really great songs that are on the radio that you can listen to in English, sometimes the singers are not clear, they don't pronounce the, 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 the language very well. So you have to look up the lyrics. I speak English fluently, I think, 
but there are songs on the radio that I still cannot understand and they're in English. So um, another tip is to select songs that tell a story. Um, most of these songs will have a theme like love and heartbreak. The best thing to do is to find a song that has a video that goes along with it. So you can kind of understand what is this person talking about? Um, my favorite thing to, when I was learning Arabic was to watch Melody Arabia. And this is like MTV for Arabic songs because they show the video. Leticia, did you have this experience? Did you watch Melody Arabia? Uh, no, but I watched FM and a lot of channels. And I know what you're talking about. Is that how you learned yeah. Egyptian when you were in Egypt? Yeah, because my host family in Egypt had the TV on all the time. So I would try to switch to the music channel and watch, uh, you know, Shirin, Shirin song, is the song where she's like gallivanting, gallivanting meaning, you know, nahawis. she's uh, nahawising in uh, Cairo and she's talking about how much she loves Egypt and you kind of understand the song and what it's talking about. So you want to select a song that tells a story. So just to recap, you want to select songs that you like to listen to. You want to go to the right places and I'm going to show you where. And you, you want to select songs that have a theme or a story that can help you understand easier. And sometimes we can get the lyrics listening to a song wrong. So I would say definitely make sure to check out the lyrics on YouTube first because it has happened to me so many times while I was learning. And also learning lyrics is obviously going to teach you how to spell easier, to spell certain words easier. Exactly. Yeah. So Leticia, do you want to go through some of the comments that we've been getting while we look up our YouTube uh, resources? Yes, we do have, I mean, Tumert that said, Tumert, I really hope I pronounced that correctly. He said that the singer that helped him the most was Eminem. He's the most lyrical artist. Now, I do agree Eminem is pretty lyrical, but how do you, how do you understand what he's saying? Like, I mean, some people are natives and struggle understanding what he's saying. Yeah, um, I was going to say Eminem is a genius because he... I mean, he, he's incredible as a musician. And when you listen to his lyrics, there's some really deep meaning in those lyrics um, that I think a lot of artists, I mean, honestly saying, cannot replicate these days. Uh, That's so true. He's incredible, yeah. I think uh, Omrani Amin was also talking about Beyonce, Whitney Houston, Miley Cyrus, Rihanna, Taylor Swift, and Coldplay. Um, do you like those artists? It. Especially Taylor Swift. She is actually my favorite. And Whitney Houston is a legend alongside Beyonce. He really has a great selection of artists. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I am going to show you guys where to go to learn some uh, in to learn English uh, through music. So I'm going to share my screen and you'll see it pop up on yours. So this is YouTube, everyone knows YouTube, you're on it right now. So this is funny because you're watching YouTube on YouTube, uh, but YouTube has an amazing selection of uh, songs with lyrics. And this is where I go to to learn Arabic as well. So all you have to do is search either karaoke songs, and karaoke, you know, karaoke is the, the, the activity that you do when you're in a, friend, in a group of friends and you want to sing. You take turns singing in front of everyone and embarrassing yourself, especially if you're me. Or um, me. <laughs> uh, Leticia, we have to do karaoke sometime together. Uh, definitely not. You're on your own on that. Um, so I typed in karaoke songs here and then found one of them. And this is Adele. So if I play the, the song, you're going to see the lyrics popping up. Leticia, you want to give it a go? You want to try to sing? I think everyone at home can sing 
Uh, everyone knows this song. And the cool thing is uh, you can follow along with it. The words are there and you can always pause and go to the dictionary and look up anything that you need to. So for example, wondering. What does wondering mean? So I'm gonna go over here, type in dictionary.com um, and then type in wondering and see what it gives me. Um, so no matter if there's a word in the song that's, um, you know, keeps popping up in the chorus, you can find it here. So here we see wondering means expressing admiration or amazement, marveling. So that's just one resource. Um, here is another I'm about to show you. This is our website, the AmericanEnglish.state.gov website. And there's a lot of cool resources here to learn English, especially to music. So here we have a CD that has children's song. Um, this is a CD, but it also comes in an MP3 version. So you can click on this file here to download. And uh, these are, if you are, for example, a parent or a teacher, there are activities for your classroom on this link here, along with the list of lyrics on here. Um, now, if you're not a, if you're not uh, trying to learn or teach your children, these there are also traditional songs that we have that are American folk songs, um, and they have the same features here: the audio, the text, and the lyrics. And these are for classroom activities as well. So these are just some of the resources that you can go to. Again, YouTube is the the best. Um, for me, because you can find almost any kind of song there to learn and it has words. And even if there are no words on the video, there's a little button that is on the side. I think you can see it right now. It says CC and it's kind of right here. Uh, CC means closed captioning. And what's really amazing about um, the United States and what we've done for the, the rights and the abilities of, of people who have uh, difficulties reading um, or listening is that we have the feature that's called closed captioning. And this means that anyone who is deaf or um, has trouble hearing can read what's being said on the screen. So if you click that button on most videos that are produced in the US, um, it will automatically pop up an, uh, a feature that will say what that person is saying. That will, uh, sorry, show what that person is saying. Um, so yeah, well, we'd love to continue this conversation, but we want to hear from the audience and what their experience has been like learning English through music or any difficulties they've had. Share with us your favorite songs, what your questions are, um, and what you recommend that I do as well to learn Arabic through through music. Um, meanwhile, if you can, Salman, if you can share your screen and play us a song, I would say Frank Sinatra, fly me to the moon, please. Yeah, sure, I can do that. Let me just pop it up. Uh, in the meanwhile, while this downloads Frank Sinatra's song, um, we do uh, have a comment from uh, Marani Amin that says there are three great karaoke places in Oren, which is great. I love Oren, by the way, and really want to visit one day. He said, I go, he says, I go there whenever I'm feeling bored and down and I get up with great energy after a karaoke session. That's really interesting because I've never been to a karaoke session. I really want to go. So if you guys can recommend a place in Algiers, that would be great. That is yeah, um, I have never been to a karaoke bar, a karaoke place here. Um, what about and in Oran? I think there's a lot of stuff to do at night, but unfortunately, whenever I go, it's for work, and we have to wake up early the next day. But all right, so we're gonna uh, listen to 
uh, a part of a song by Frank Sinatra. Um, Can we hear, can you hear that, Leticia? Um, no, not really. I didn't start. Oh, it's a karaoke version. Someone, do you think yeah. we can play the regular? Can you hear the song in the background? Um, do you think we can play the regular version? I'm not hearing it. Yeah, let me look for the regular version, yeah. Is this sound on for you guys? Because I cannot really hear. Yeah, no sound. Oh, that's unfortunate. Here we go, maybe. Mm -mm, still no sound. Is it working now? Trying to fix it. Nope. This is such a. Yes. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. Anyway, I think uh, one of the, to, to end with, um, the really cool thing about listening uh, to the music is that it teaches you how to be poetic and use colorful language. As you see in the song, he's saying, fly me to the moon. I mean, you clearly wouldn't say that every day um, and you would hear this on- uh, I think our guest is here. Ah, she's popped up, okay. Yeah, she is connected, let me just accept her. Okay, here she is. So our special guest is here um, and uh, is connecting to the audio. Uh, thanks again mm -hmm. to everyone who has showed up. Um, Hello. Hey, Hi, Lydia. Lydia, welcome. Well, guys, let me introduce you to Lydia. She is a singer. She is also a med student and she even taught English at some point. So she is the perfect person that we can discuss this with. Welcome, Lydia. Thank you. I'm so sorry for being late. No, it's okay. Well, I did hear you will sing a bit for us. So what do you have? Okay, so I've prepared for you guys a small part of one of my very favorite songs. It's a Frank Sinatra song. And um, I hope you like it. So I'm going to go a cappella. Fly me to the moon and let me dance among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter, Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, baby, kiss me. Be my heart with song and let me dance forevermore. You are all I long for. All I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, I love you. Yes, that was so beautiful. That was great. Thank you. You saved me from having to sing on camera. <laughs> My pleasure. At least I could help. So Lydia, um, I think you are an alumna of one of our programs. So you've done AYLP, correct? Yes, indeed, yes. I was an adult mentor in AYLP uh, 2017 edition. Oh, and also you were a teacher. You were an English teacher. Were you connected to our access program? Indeed. Actually, I've graduated. I double majored in algeria. 
I was a medical student and I was also an English student and I got my bachelor's degree in 2013 and that's when I graduated and I started teaching in an uh, access uh, program as an English teacher. It was a great experience actually. Um, Lydia, as someone that really learned English through music, can you tell us what was the motivation behind you learning English and what were the difficulties you've encountered? Actually, I have started uh, listening to Engl music in English and watching movies in English at a very young age. And I was mostly interested in music and in, in the movies. That's what's interesting about my experience is that I was not really targeting the language rather than actually enjoying the music, for instance. That's why it's a, a really an amazing method for anybody to learn a language. I was mostly, you know, interested in learning those songs and singing those songs and enjoying just my time listening to, to music. All of the comments agree about how beautiful that singing was. Oh, thank you guys. I'm so flattered. Well, Yidja, can you also tell us if you've encountered any difficulties and also give us the tips how to get over these difficulties for someone that's learning English right now? Of course, as a, um, as for well, English has always been a foreign language for me. So at the beginning, when I was listening to these songs and uh, this, this foreign language for me, at the beginning, I really knew no words. At all. I have had no prior uh, learning of the language. I was really a very beginner. And I remember by uh, the very first times when I was listening to these songs, I really had no idea what the words were which was really weird because I was just murmuring these words and just repeating the catchy, you know, words or the catchy phrases. And by as time passed by, I found out that I was uh, getting to learn more and more the language because I was repeating the same sentences, the same phrases, the same words. And it's an amazing method for anybody to actually learn new vocabulary and to learn especially how to uh, pronounce. Well, being an English teacher or a former English teacher, I have learned there for, uh, for beginners the best method to, you know, to start learning a language is to work the two most uh, important skills for a beginner, which are listening and speaking. And there is absolutely no better way to learn these two by, than, uh, than by listening to music or listening to songs and repeating these songs. Because by repeating, we enhance our pronunciation because we pronounce these words as, as, as they are pronounced by the native speakers. And we learn these words, this vocabulary, because we are intrigued by the meaning. I mean, we repeat always the same sentence, the same words, and we're like, hmm, I wonder what that means. So it's really motivating for somebody to go ahead and look for the meaning of that word or just to, you know, look it up to understand what, what's the meaning of the song. So you learn the vocabulary and at the same time, you learn how to, pr to pronounce, sorry, the word adequately. So it's a really great method to learn English actually, or any language for that matter. Thank you so much for those tips, uh, Lydia. I think uh, that is, uh, is important to keep in mind um, and, and for any language overall. Yeah. What are you doing these days? Are you using English in your daily life? Well, yeah, actually, uh, I, English is, has always and always will be part of my life. I mean, I use it a lot when I watch TV or when I listen to music, for instance, pretty much most of the songs I listen to are in, are in English. So English has always been involved in my life. I use it in my daily lives and I actually live in France for the moment and it's uh, of great use as a language where you can, mostly use English more than French here in French, which, which is pretty weird. And at the moment I'm in Italy actually, and uh, I've been using English ever since I arrived here, which is pretty, pretty great because you know, it's a universal language and you can use it, whatever. So it's a great, um, big part of my life nowadays. That's great. Um, and what about your favorite songs to learn English? Do you have recommendations for artists or song types um, for people uh, in the audience who want to learn? Yes, well, um, I have actually two tips. The first one is we all love music, but we don't, well, fortunately we don't all have the same taste. So the best tip I could give to anybody who wants to learn English through music is to actually listen to songs that they actually like. Because when you listen to something you really enjoy, you will be motivated, you know, to learn the words that are in that song or to, repeat that song, you know, you find it catchy, find it interesting. So 
basically just listen to songs that you really love and you will eventually learn something from it. And the second tip is if you really want to learn how to pronounce adequately or how to, um, you know, to learn words a little bit better, I advise people to listen to jazz because, you know, when you listen to jazz, it's a little bit slower. The pronunciation is better and you get to, you know, uh, pick up the words easier. It's easier to understand. It's easier to listen to. So I think jazz and blues and uh, this kind of songs are a little bit um, easier for a beginner to pick up words from. And I'm a huge jazz fan, so I think I'm a little biased here. That's great. Uh, Lydia, a question. If Since you were a teacher of English in the past, what can you recommend for those in the audience who are trying to teach their own children or in a classroom setting? How can they best integrate or have music in their curriculum? Okay. As a teacher, I have always used music in my classes for any or for every age category. Uh, I've used it with adults, with kids, with teenagers, and it's always a great idea because everybody loves music. So for kids, it's actually very interesting because it's an easier way for them to pick up the language and it's fun. So you get those kids very interested in, you know, in learning the language because you're doing it in a fun way. They will not be uh, like aware that they are learning, but it's going to be acquiring for them because they're going to be just there having fun, you know, learning and playing and without even being uh, being aware of it. For instance, I had kids who were like three years old, four years old, and I used to teach them English. You know, it's hard a little bit for a teacher to convince a three-year-old to learn a foreign language because you cannot tell them, oh, just you have to learn it. It's good for you. You're going to use it later. You cannot really use this kind of uh, logic with kids. So I just, you know, play songs uh, and I, I integrate songs in every uh, activity possible. For instance, I give you an example. I used to play this uh, this game with kids in order to learn alphabets. So if I have a small class of three or four year, or four uh, kids, I just tell them uh, we have just learned alphabet, and I just give them this uh, activity where I just put around um, the alphabet uh, letters in a circle, and I put the kids inside the circle, and I tell them just to turn around while I play music in the background. And whenever I stop the music, they have to stop at the given letter and tell me what the, what the, what's the letter that they are in front of. It's very interesting because at the same time, they're learning alphabet and at the same time, they're listening to music in English. And it's really, really interesting how kids pick up very quickly. They have spongy minds that really pick up language very, very quickly. So it's, uh, I think it's basically the immersion of the students in the, in the foreign language. The more that they are they feel involved in the language, the more they're immersed in the language, the more they pick up. And for adults, for instance, I used to teach oral expression at the university. When I graduated, I taught as a, um, as a teacher for, uh, for a year, as an oral expression teacher. And for my first year students, I used to uh, choose some songs that are a little bit meaningful, that could be interpreted by people. So I just put the song and I omit some words in order to make them practice their listening. I ask them to listen to the, to the song and give me the words that are missing. And then we do an activity where we analyze the song according to what we actually understand. Because music is pretty much uh, nowadays like um, a modern poetry. So it's not really uh, interpreted necessarily the same way by every listener. So I just uh, ask people, to ask my students to analyze the song and tell me what they think the singer means by that, uh, by that song or by that verse or the entire song. It's really an, an amazing activity and it's also fun for, for both the students and the, the teacher. These are just some of the activities I used to uh, use when I was a teacher. I think you mentioned a game where you can learn uh, through music. I remember doing the same thing. If there's a song, you are all in a group of friends and you're singing, you start out with a song. Um, yeah. And then you end. And that ending letter, yeah, is what the next person has to start their song with. So oh. that person has to start singing a song that starts with yeah. So that's a game that people can uh, can learn uh, to play very easily. Uh, 
I think we have another question here from Amin Dinos. Amin Dinos, uh, I can hear and understand English uh, songs, okay. but I struggle when I talk. So how about speaking it, speaking English when you understand it completely fine, but maybe that person um, wants more practice to speak? How do you suggest this? Well, actually, I first of all have to congratulate this person because they have passed the difficult part, in my opinion, because now that you can listen to clearly to the language, you can understand and you can uh, watch uh, movies in, in English or listen to music in English, you have already passed the difficult part. As for the practicing part, I there is not, there is not a better way than to make English uh, part of your daily life. You have to, to practice it pretty much everywhere. And one of the best um, methods that I have found to be very, very uh, functional is to practice with somebody who has the same objective. If you have a friend who is a little bit better, who has pretty much the same level as you are, or as you do, sorry, you just have to practice with that person. You agree, you, may, you have an agreement with a person that whenever you meet or whatever you call each other or you text each other, you just speak in English and only in English. That is actually a great way to uh, learn. Otherwise, I advise also people to go around and uh, participate in uh, programs like abroad, because that is also one of the best um, methods to learn the language. I remember I was uh, a participant in the Peace Project in Poland, where we were supposed to um, go around uh, places in Poland and give um, presentations about our countries, our cultures, and also teach English. I remember there was a participant there who was from, uh, I think he was from Turkey, and he basically knew just very medium language, like he had a very medium uh, level. He was not really able to speak and to communicate uh, like all the rest of us and I remember he was really intimidated at the beginning but given the circumstances that he was in a very uh, far um, country from his he was in a foreign country where he didn't speak the language Polish is very difficult so he was actually obliged to use the English language even though he did not have a very good level but I remember by the end of the program it was for two months I remember he was speaking perfect English because he was obliged. He was in a, a setting where he had to speak English or just, you know, he had absolutely no solution because he cannot speak Polish, he cannot speak English. He would not be able to do nothing. He would be able to go nowhere. He would be able to do nothing at all in the program. So he was obliged actually because he was there practicing, talking to everybody of us, trying to, um, you know, ask for words that he didn't understand, trying to listen a little bit better. And I, I remember I was astonished by the end because he was speaking very perfect English. So that is actually one of the great methods to practice too. If you have uh, the sense of adventure, I advise you to go for it. Thank you, Lydia, for these tips. They're very clever ways, by the way. Um, but we do have a comment from Tufik that says, the one problem I have with this, however, is that music doesn't always mimic spoken language. Any tips do you have about this? Uh, well, maybe you should change the type of music that you of music that you are listening to because personally, I find that they they repeat a lot of phrases that you find in uh, daily uh, or daily life conversations or phrases that are uh, used in language in the, um, in the song story that we can actually use when we speak uh, English in our, in um, our daily life. So I don't, I don't really um, necessarily agree with uh, it was Tufiq, right? Yes, it is. Yes. So maybe it's just the type of music, for instance, if you are listening to, I don't know, Cardi B or something. I don't think that is something you can apply when you want to speak uh, daily life English. So, I uh, I had something to say about this because I struggled with it when I was learning Arabic. So one of the yes. things that I struggled with in Arabic was every song sung by a male is sung in a male conjugated uh, address. It's it's addressed to another male. So when yes. Amr Diab, when Amr Diab sings, he says, Ya Habibi, he doesn't say Ya Habibti. Uh, yes. Ya Habibi Bahabak, not uh, Ya Habibti Bahabak. 
So I'm, I'm always wondering, wondering why, why exactly. are they always singing to other males? Um, so this ties to whatever Lydia was saying and Tofik's question by the internet is amazing. If you go on the internet and type in the name of a song and you, you write, you know, uh, translation analysis, you will find a hundred websites that talk about what each lyric, each phrase in the song actually means. Um, and I think Tofik, you have a really good point. Uh, I remember the song that was very popular in my high school, Sugar Sugar, which of course is not spelled right in the song, Sugar Sugar, uh, by, uh, I think his name was Baby Bash. And the lyrics go something like this. You know it's leather when we ride, wood, grain, and raw hide. Doing what we do, watching screens, getting high. Girl, you keep it so fly. Now, if anyone who's learning English and has never lived in the US reads these four lines, I guarantee you it's going to be very hard to understand what they're talking about. Very confusing. But very confusing, right, Leticia? But I think if you go on the website, uh, if you go on a website that talks about this song, you're likely to find more information about what they're actually talking about. What does this slang actually mean? And I want to share another website with you guys, urbandictionary.com. Urban Dictionary is my best friend because every time I go back to the US, I am hearing slang that I have no idea what it means. Um, and Urban Dictionary is great to go to if you want to know random words that you wouldn't find in, in another traditional dictionary. All right, so uh, another question. What about thinking, this is from Omar Shanin. Uh, what about thinking in English instead of translating in your head? What do you think about doing that? So I think in English, Lydia and Leticia, um, what do you have to say about this question? How can you start thinking in English instead of translating it in your head? I mean, I, I think in English because I started learning English at a young age. So it's like when I was developing my thoughts and learning stuff about life, I just, it really grew up with me, thoughts in English. So do not know about you, Lydia, but that's it for me. Well, um, I would say that I, it's actually a problem that many of my students have had but at the time when I was a teacher and they always asked me the question and um, I find it very effective because, you know, a lot of people when they're learning a foreign language as an adult, they think in their mother language and then they speak in the, um, in the English language, which is not necessarily um, a very good way to uh, speak the foreign language. So many of my students have already had this problem. And I think the best way, as I said earlier, I know I keep repeating the same thing, but it's only because it's very, very important is to Im like completely immerse yourself in this foreign language and surround yourself in things in English. If you want to watch a movie, watch it in English. If you want to listen to music, listen in English. If you want to speak, speak in English. If you want to really, really learn the language, you, you have to surround yourself with English in every aspect of your life. And you will pick up the language very quickly. You will pick up the thinking in English very quickly because it's kind of tricky, you know, when you learn language as, a, and as an adult, even linguistically speaking, like scientifically speaking, when you learn it as, an, as, a, as a kid, you develop that foreign language in a part of your mind that is really close to your mother tongue to your mother language. So the switch between the two languages is very easy, but when you learn it as an adult, you develop it at a certain part in your brain that is actually a little bit far from your mother tongue. So the switch is not that easy. That's why you have to immerse like uh, yourself completely in that foreign language. You have to surround yourself with English in any aspect of your life, as I said. At least, at least sorry, try to um, speak English for an hour or, uh, two hours a day and there are a lot of apps that could help. There are a lot of apps that have uh, proven themselves very effective uh, in helping people practice the language. So just you have to speak it a lot, practice a lot. And it's, it's the key for you to switch the thinking from thinking to Arabic to thinking uh, in English. I think it's the most effective way. Well, thank you so much uh, to our special guest, Lydia. That's unfortunately all the time we have. We were very honored to have her on the show. And thank you to my co-host, Leticia. I hope that you all uh, got, out, got a lot of 
uh, tips from this show. I've forgotten how to speak English. It's been a long day. Um, one thing that you guys need to do is subscribe. Subscribe. It's the button right here in red. Please subscribe to the U.S. Embassy Algiers YouTube channel. We're planning to make this show a more regular experience so that all of you who are interested in learning English can practice and learn tips um, at home. So please subscribe and stay tuned for our next show. Uh, we'll be putting this uh, more information on our social media. So stay tuned for, for that. And please uh, go to the websites that I've mentioned, americanenglish.state.gov has a lot of music resources. So does YouTube and urbandictionary.com is a really great resource to try to learn slang in English. Um, thank you again uh, for, for watching our show and we hope to see you next time on Nispeak You. Bye everyone.